North America. Sir, I know you're not responsible for my galaxy being 10% less, but shrinkflation is an issue. And just as I was saying to uh, Issa about people who can't make, bill, you know, make, make ends meet, you've got no choice. You either put up the price or you reduce the product. Yeah, well, well, Richard, first of all, thank, thanks for having me. I think one of the things that, that we are pretty responsible in doing is just making sure that we are taking all uh, potential measures on our side of the business to make sure uh, that we're trying to provide value. And, and sometimes we have to go in and make adjustments to the product to make sure we can keep quality high uh, and making sure we're providing value across sort of the price value stream, if you would. As a matter of fact, I was just uh, in our European plants last month that we have a tremendous manufacturing community and history uh, in, in, in Europe and uh, look they are fast at working making sure that first we have high quality uh, that we're making sure that our costs are in control and that we're managing again the value spectrum for our consumers the issue of price elasticity if you will uh, to use that horrible phrase we've always thought that a Mars bar well you know people always want to cheer themselves up with a Mars bar particularly if it's a fried Mars bar in Scotland but We've always thought that people would, um, would buy these things. Is there any suggestion that that's changed, that, that recession-proof nature of candy? Yeah, well, I think the beautiful thing about, about confection and treats and you know, yeah, snacking in general is the fact that it you know, is a pretty resistant sort of space, you know, and particularly as you relate to the more indulgent side. You know, as it relates to seasons, and you're coming into the Halloween season as well, that's a tremendous period of what we call permissibility, meaning consumers give themselves the permission to go and consume as well. And so that is a very sort of hardwired ritual as it relates to certain seasons. And we find that people are, first of all, they're enjoying them, uh, and it becomes a sort of a routinized part of sort of how they uh, sort of allocate their calories across their entire nutritional intake. As the head of Mars America, how difficult is it for you to choose between your children? all the various products, because sometimes you have to get, I mean, you know, even if it doesn't sell brilliantly, there are some people who will swear by a particular product that they've known since they were children, and if you touch them, sir, woe beside you. Well, you know, that's a great question, and, uh, you know, I, I love all our children, we love all of our children, but, you know, we're fortunate to have uh, some tremendous brands. You know, we have 11 yeah. brands that are over $1 billion in terms of revenue as well, and soon our ice cream business will get there uh, by 2030. And so, you know, for us, it's making sure that those iconic brands like a Mars, uh, like a Mars bar in the UK, like an M&M's, like a Snickers, like a Twix, I can go on down the line, uh, they're beautiful. And, you know, they provide, you know, different types of enjoyment across our, our household set and across our consumer set as well. So I think it's up to us to make sure, A, that they're relevant, uh, that we continue to sort of push them out there with high quality and with the types of marketing is really going to continue to draw people in to make sure it's a continuous part of their consumption, you know, with responsibility around that as well. But the, the ownership structure of the company is always fascinating. It's a privately owned company. It's still the, the family. Do you think that... I mean, whenever I've spoken to senior execs at Mars, they all say that helps because it's got a long-term focus on the business. They're not worried about a quarterly result. They can take the risk or, take the, uh, or, or make the decisions with a vision of 10, 15, 20 years' time. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would agree with that wholeheartedly. I think, first of all, look, we're a purpose-driven organization, and we don't think that there is a conflict between purpose and profit. You know, one, one needs to drive the other, and so I think as senior executives, we understand that with a level of clarity, and we're aligned with that with the family with something that we call the compass. And our compass is essentially our agreement with the family around how we want to run the company and under what constructs we want to run the company as well. First of all, we operate off of something called the five principles, which everybody is familiar with but also it allows us to have a very long-term view around how to execute against our purpose and ensuring that the economic model supports that as well. You know, as a matter of fact, right. there's, parts that, there's parts of that compass that's built around how do we make the world a better place. And, you know, as one of the senior executives, part of my long-term compensation is making sure that I'm putting just as much emphasis on how we make the world a better place as I am in making sure that our economic model continues to move forward. A uh, couple more questions before I let you go. Uh, it's, it's fascinating to have you with us. To be, uh, you know, how, how, how difficult are the debates about naming products, particularly when there have been different products in different countries? Same product, different country, and you really want to standardise it. We saw it with Snickers. We have seen it with Twix. But you want to standardise around one name. How difficult? 
Yeah, you know, uh, you know, like like any other company, I'd say, you know, we obviously do a tremendous amount of uh, consumer research, but also being a global company, we have to be sensitive to our regions right. and to our local localities as well. It's very important for us to understand the cultural context. And so I think we do a pretty good job at listening to our consumers, making sure there's good cultural context around that, and I think putting a name and investment behind that name and brand building in a very consistent way. I need to make a point out to anybody who thinks otherwise, we did pay for all these things. Um, but now the really horrible question for you. Pick your poison. You can have one to go home with. Go on, you're going to go for the M&Ms <laughs> or the Mars bar? <laughs> only one, Anton. You only need one. Well, it's hard to pick one, Richard, uh, oh. because I would say they serve different purposes. So I'm going to take oh. both. How about that? Why did I not know that was going to be your answer? <laughs> Good to see you, sir. Kind of you to come in. Thank you.